happy to this beautiful Sunday afternoon where there's a little bit of snow and a little bit of sunshine. Uh, today we're going to uh, have the uh, four fantastic chefs and their little ones do love bites. And the reason I'm sitting on an exercise bite is because after we're done and you've, you've copied the recipes or you've you know, tried to make them, I know that you're going to need to lose weight like me. So um, I, I thank everyone who's participated in this and thank you to all those who, have, who are watching. I can promise you these ladies are amazing. And uh, I'm going to start off with Fiona Pinto de Souza, who's uh, going to tell you what she's making. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Greta. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to present to you. Today, I'm going to be making a boozy tiramisu. Let me know Ooh. if you can hear me. But uh, tiramisu is very easy to make. And I, this is my go-to recipe because it's easy to make. You can make it a day ahead. And um, it tastes decadent and it looks like you spent hours. So without further ado, I will send the recipe off to Greta, but you first need, there are two parts. You need the coffee liqueur. So in this liqueur, uh, in this dish, I have two cups of coffee, uh, a quarter cup of Kahlua, and a third of a cup of Sambuca. Sambuca is an anisette liqueur. And it's a little bitter, but it perfectly complements the sweetness of the coffee liqueur. And then we've got these lady fingers. So that's part one. And what you do is you take these lady fingers and you dunk them in the coffee liqueur and then you place them into a layer. And I've got this dish going. It's a heart shaped with the first layer, and that's as simple as it can be. The second part of the layer is the tiramisu, which is made out of mascarpone cheese. So I've got a tub and a half of mascarpone cheese. I've got one and a half cups of whipping cream, and I've got half a cup of icing sugar, with of course, more liquor, another two tablespoons of um, Kahlua. So you blend the whipping cream till it's soft peaks. You add in the mascarpone cheese and the two tablespoons uh, of Kahlua, and you're going to get a texture like this. And basically all you have to do is cut the, uh, do half on one layer. So I'm putting down layer number one, it's two layers, so you just split it in half. Tiramisu was invented in Northern Italy by a gentleman who came from a small village. He passed away last year at 93. So, you know, as much as they say cheese is not good for you, I beg to defer, but. So that is my first layer of the tiramis, uh, the tiramisu cheese. And then we're going to do the second layer of the biscuits. And what I try and do is cross hatch it so that when you cut into it, you've got a nice little um, pattern and you can see the layers. You know, this is the easy version of Bibic for those of you that <laughs> make Bibic. Greta, you may need to sing because, you know, I'm not a good singer. They don't leave. <laughs> Bernie, you want to sing? Almost done. And then to get the little nooks and corners, I have some little little bits here that I dunk in. You may have leftover 
dipping um, coffee, but that's okay. You can always brush it on if you want to. And I just need another smaller piece here. And there we go. Layer number two is on. And then we're gonna add the last part of the second part of the cream. I'm trying to be as neat as possible. Sorry, ladies. And then you, you've just got to level it off. And then finally for the topping, we come back with some, and I've got it here, some um, I sprinkle it with uh, cocoa powder. So I'm just gonna move this for a second so you can see. So the pan I used is one of those pans that you can open up and uh, take off the mold. And you'll see that when I come back. So just give me two, sec two seconds while I put this away and bring out a finished product. Fiona, is that hot chipped? Of course, Greta, just for you. <laughs> So here we are. I hope you can see it. Wow. And really all you have to do, the nice part about it is you keep it overnight in the fridge and you take it out. Now I remove the mold and I just put extra cookies around so it looks nice. They're not done. And then I've, you know, dusted it with hot chocolate and I added a little almonds for, um, for presentation. And voila, I guess I should cut a piece so you can all see it, right? You just find a way to, sorry. And anyone's welcome for dessert today or coffee or tea. Not there, sorry. So here you go. Can't quite, the layer is more, you can see the layer on that side. So there. Easy boozy tiramisu, decadent and good. I honestly, um, I have get a lot of compliments on this one. Thank you, Fiona. Fiona, that was fantastic. Uh, as usual, I've tasted your, your desserts and your cooking and you're amazing. But thank you very much for doing this for us. You're welcome. Thanks, Greta. And uh, now we'll move on to Joan de Rosario. And here's Joan, she's our rosary lady. She prayed very hard that today would be a success, right Joan? Yes, I spent all day yesterday praying that this would be a success. So I could first of all do with some of that boozy tiramisu that Fiona did, it looks delicious. But the booze is what uh, got me. Anyway, so today I'm gonna be doing a demonstration of cake toppers. So, I, I needed to keep the theme of Love Bites, you know, the Love Bite theme that's going with this event. So what do we do? So to titillate your man or woman, whatever floats your boat, 
I chose to do a double layered chocolate cake with a mocha ganache um, a, a filling. It's pre-baked because I'm doing the cake toppers and not the cake. So it's pre-baked and pre-iced. Yes. It's just pre-iced with Everybody mute a plain that. fondant, just a plain fondant. If you can see, it's a heart shape with plain fondant. And I put a row of sugar beads around it. But I'm thinking, what goes well with, uh, what titillates love bites with decadent chocolate? Chocolate is an aphrodisiac, so I got the chocolate. I got the love. What else can we do? We can do roses. That goes with the theme. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make your rose toppers. You need the fondant, which I have here. I have red, a nice red fondant going. I got the red by using a white fondant and a red icing gel. All these things can be bought from the bulk store, not great, any great expense or any cake, any cake place that you go to. So I'm just going to demonstrate, first of all, a few of how we get the petals going. So you just make a, sorry, you just make a roll, just roll out your fondant like so into a roll. With your paring knife, you cut out just little pieces like so. I'm just going to do three petals just to, to get you going. I mean, I put them on wax paper and then I put another piece of wax paper on top of that and using a I'm just using a plate cutting board. I press down. I press down as much as I can. And what you get are rounds like that. But I want them a little bigger, so I'm going to use my icing roller. You can use any roller. You can use your rolling pin, any rolling pin, and just roll them out a little bit. So you get this kind of shape, which is going to be your petals. I've already rolled out about 11 petals. In the interest of time, because we don't have time to do all of them. And it's very simple how we form the rolls. I take that little piece of the red fondant, roll it in the shape of a bowling pin. Just with your fingers. You don't need any tools for this, by the way. Just roll it with your fingers in the shape of a little bowling pin. Then using your petals that you've rolled out, you take one petal, place it over your bowling pin like that, and don't close it, just place it over. You take your next petal and tuck it into the first one. And you roll it around. Now you can tuck it in and press down. And you keep the process going. Then you do, I've done two. I'm going to do three now, just a little higher than the others. I just peel off, tuck it in, turn it around half, and you get another one. And you've got another layer of rose petals. Then I'm doing four. So I take this one over. Try and get it over if you can. As I said, just stuck it into the one before. Another red petal. Tuck it in and you get another one here. And you can see already you have the formation of a rose. You see? Now you, got, you can do one more layer. 
So I do a fifth layer, just like that, placing it on top. Don't close it. Tuck the second one in. And then the third one. You can press down, I haven't been pressing down. So you just press down on it, so they stick. Another petal there, and the last one here. Now you can press down, press down on it to form your base. Now with the uh, top of your finger, you just open the petals up a bit. Just open the petals up a bit and you have your rose. You press down onto the base because you don't want all that. You, I mean, you might want to keep a long base, but. And then, you just, with your paring knife, you can just cut it off, the excess. And there you have your perfect rose. Beautiful. So, now I've just made the one, just to demonstrate how simple and easy it is. What I did before was pre-made a cluster. which I'm going to place on the cake. I have a cluster of roses here that I made already. You can place it right there. I made a little leaf, a petal, and that is pretty, but I thought it needed a little more, so. I placed a cascade. There you have it. I placed a cascade of roses right down the center. Or if you don't want the cascade, as I said, you just do the plain rose. And now this, this, once you cut into it, is guaranteed, guaranteed, trust me, to titillate your guy or your gal, and you have love bites all night long. Now the second, the second display I'm gonna show you, the second demonstration I'm gonna do is after the love bites, you want to get a little bit um, with your kid, grandkids for Easter. Love Bites can wait for another 360 days for Valentine's Day. So now you want Easter. So what better than an Easter bunny cake? So I have baked already a yellow Easter cake. It's just a plain chocolate for the kids. It's a round cake and uh, we want to put a bunny on it. How do you make a bunny? Simple and easy. I have a piece of white fondant, which I've rolled into a ball. You just roll it into a ball, just with your fingers. You can just make it a little bit round, so. And now you want to put some eyes on him. And, uh, I have here a ball tool. You don't need a ball tool. You can use the back of a, just a regular paintbrush. But I have a ball tool, I'm gonna to use it. I have make indents for my eyes, there, and my nose. And I'm gonna keep that aside for a minute and show you how to do the bunny ears. I take a bit of fondant white fondant and roll it out with my little 
I can roll in thin. You don't need the parchment paper, I actually throw it. If you find your, part of your icing is too soft, you can use um, a cornstarch to form it. So what I do is I just roll out a piece of white fondant. I take my form. I have a leaf cutter. This is a leaf cutter, I just use that. That's going to be your ears. So I cut out two of these. You want to form them. So what I do is you use a dowel. I have just a plain little dowel here, or I use my rolling pin. Okay, so I'm going to use the dowel. You turn the edge over the dowel. So let's put it there. Just turn the edge over so it forms. This takes a couple of hours. So I, it takes a couple of hours to form. So need patience for that. So what I've done here, just to give it a little bit of color, I've rolled out some more fondant. And freehand cut just a little shape that's going to go inside the ears. Just going to sit like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a bunny ear like so, okay? So just a piece of fondant with the pink inside and you roll. So I'm going to keep this rolled here so that it forms the ears. In the meantime, for the nose of the bunny, I have a little piece of pink fondant, just a little piece of, piece of pink fondant. You can do a little oval and just press it into, into the indent that you've made. Just press it there. If it doesn't stick, you can use a paintbrush with a little water. It's just a little pink there. Now for the eyes, you have, you could use black fondant, just a little piece of black fondant that you poke into the eyes like so. Like that. And after your ears are formed, as I said, takes a couple of hours. I've got two that I had pre-made. So I'm just going to poke them into the top of the bunny head. Cute. There you go. And you've got your perfect little bunny head. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the cake. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do the feet. You need little paws. So you just take a little circle of fondant, just a round little piece of fondant. And with your finger, you just shape it into a little, a little kind of ball like that, but flat on top. You take your paring knife and make an indent for the paw. So put that all together. I've already done, pre-done this cake. And I have a bunny here already pre-done. What I've done is I've used googly eyes. You get these googly eyes, you can pick them up at the dollar store. They come in a bag and you have the googly eyes and it titillates all the kids, they love it. I put my bunny here. I've got my little paws. Let's put them on. 
it's butter icing, so everything sticks on really nicely. And it's Easter, so you've got your little eggs. There you go. And it's simple, easy to make, cake topper. Beautiful. I did, I did add a little extra bobtail, just with a little bit of icing around, and I just added a little bobtail. So there you have it. Kids will be happy. Enjoy. And anyone that wants to come over for cake, please do so. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. I've enjoyed doing this. It was wonderful. And now Thank my you. husband has been watching the love bite thing. He wants a piece of cake. I don't know what's going to come with the cake, but thank you. Thank you, Joan. That was wonderful, as usual. Uh, Joan, Joan has demonstrated her, her um, skills at uh, Forever Young on a Wednesday, where she, yeah. built, where she built all of us on a cake. So little men, little women dancing, line dancing, and it was amazing. Thank you, Joan. That was Thank wonderful. You. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to Lizette. Hi, everybody. Lizette and Arjun. Hello, Arjun. Can you tell Arjun. them about yourself? Arjun. Hi, I'm Arjun. Hi, I'm Arjun. Hi, I'm Arjun. Hi, I'm Arjun. All right. How so, hi, you? everybody. Those were two hard acts to follow. Arjun, what did you think of that bunny? Was that great? Is that yes. a thumbs up or two yes. thumbs up? Okay, give it two thumbs up. Yeah, that was terrific. And then you know what Nama and Grandpa really loved? We loved the cake with all the booze in it. You know what booze is? No. Drinks. You're not supposed to have that. Anyway, so today, Arjun and myself will be showing you how to make a pastry. And what is the pastry called, Arjun? Um, uh, Danish. Lovely. Danishes. Danishes. Because soon it's going to be March break and moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas are going to wonder what can I make for the kids that's going to be interesting and that they can help me with. So today Arjun and, and the grandma are going to show you how to make danishers that are good for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks or desserts. Right Arjun? Yeah. Okay. So Arjun, what is your favorite sandwich? Um, uh, Lovely. Um, Peanut butter jam sandwich. Loudy, shout it out. Peanut butter jam sandwich. Peanut butter and jam sandwich. So you know what? This is this is a Danish done just for kids. So today, and I'm going to tell you, I just get these pre-made puff pastries. This is made with puff pastry, and they're already pre-made and cut to size. So you can get that from any grocery store. Um, Walmart sells it. It's in the frozen section. And you take that out and put it into your fridge the night before you want, uh, um, the night before the day you want to use it. So the first one we're going to make is going to be a peanut butter and jam danish. And who is that for? Me. That's right, it's for you. So let's get started. So we need the we need the space here. Okay. So we're going to put that down. Oh, I need a sharp knife. All right, and I'm going to show you what we do. Here's yours. So we've no, got a bit. All right, nice. that was yours. Sorry. This one is nice. Okay, let's hold it up. So to do the Danish, we're going to cut along the corners of that pastry, just like this. You want to show them margin yours? So we go up along the corner. We leave a little space, about half an inch to an inch, and we cut just the corners. All right? So I'm going to do that, and um, I've got to keep a sharp knife out here, so I'm just going to grab that. Sorry, guys. Okay. So now remember, children are not allowed to touch a knife, right? So how are we going to do this? You hold my hand, and we're going to cut it just like that. Go down to the middle. Leave a little spot. I hope you can see me. If not, you know the diagram. You can follow the diagram, right? You go all the way there. You're going to leave a little space. You're going to go like this. Leave a little space. Now you may say, ooh, to peanut butter and jam, but it's every kid's favorite. 
So we're going to let them have what they love, right, Arjun? That's right. Okay, so I've done that pastry and I've cut it up. Um, you won't be able to see it, but you'll see why it's important in a minute, okay? So here we go. Now into that, we're going to put some peanut butter and jam here. You want to put the jam in the middle? Just put it down there and then mush it around with the back of the spoon so it goes all over, okay? Good job. And then we're going to take peanut butter. Now Arjun loves peanuts. Sometimes the squirrels don't get their peanuts because when Arjun comes over, who eats those peanuts? Me. Yes, you do. And this is a chunky peanut butter. And what do you do with this? Do you put your fingers in there sometimes? Yeah. What do you do? I take out the peanuts. That's right. You take out the peanuts and you eat it. So we're going to put that inside there. Yeah. You want to finish that? Move it around. Okay. Looks a little gooey, but it tastes yummy, right? Yeah. Okay. So now this is the fun part and you can get your kids involved. Uh, yeah. You're watching me, Arjun? So I'm going to take the corner up. Can you see that? And we're going to push it down into the middle. Yeah. Now you can do that corner. Okay. All right. Let's see. You can do that corner. Two hands. Good job. Okay. Oops. Grandma didn't cut that properly. Way to go. All right. So if you guys can see what we've done, it's... You forgot to put something in That's the right. So we're going to decorate the middle. And Arjun has decided we're going to use... What are we going to use for the middle? Our blue bean. We're going to use Smarties or m ms And what color do you want to put in the middle? Uh, this color. What is that color? Uh, orange. So that's an orange. Can I eat the broken one? You can eat all of them later. Let's finish our job first, okay? The broken one. Yeah, I'll give you one right now. Okay, the broken okay, one. You can have that one. Have all right, so I'm going to transfer that to a baking sheet that I've lined with a silico silicone mat. You can use uh, parchment paper or aluminum foil, whatever suits you. And I'm just going to leave that there. And actually, before, I, before you start doing this, you preheat your oven to 400 degrees. So you're ready to bake as soon as you finish doing this. Done, Arjun? Shall we do the next one? So the next one is a really pretty one that you could serve at a brunch if you're having it or for a dessert or for breakfast, whatever you'd like to. And um, my pastry is a little soft because it's been out for a bit, but let's go. Okay, should we do this one? All right, I'm gonna cut it again. You wanna hold my hand? All right. So basically, it's just a simple step. You can see how easy it is. Anyone can do this. But the fun is all in the fillings. And you're gonna choose fillings that your guests love, that you love, that your kids love. And you're gonna make these pretty danishes whenever you feel like it, right? Okay, so this one here is going to be, we're gonna show you how to do something fun. What is this, Arjun? What are we gonna use now? What is that? Pineapple. Okay, should we put it right in the middle there? Yeah. This one's just a pineapple. All right, you wanna fold the corners up for me? I'll do one. Okay. You can do that one. Okay, you can do the next one too. Oops. Okay. There you go. Very pretty. What should we put in the middle of that one? A blueberry. Blueberry. Okay. Put that blueberry in the middle. All right. So here we have. The one with the blueberry, I hope you can see it. And then I, I finished some later so you can see what the finished product looks like. Looks like the Smarties are disappearing, but that's not a problem. That's an orange one. That's an orange one? Okay, so you gotta keep your hands clean because you're helping me, right? Put that all in your mouth. Put it all in your mouth. Okay, let's clean, clean that hand. Okay. And then what are we gonna do next? Do you like apple pie, Arjun? All right, so maybe we'll do the next one um, with apples. Oh, I have a pastry there. Okay, did we cut it? Hold my hand. Okay, should we go to the middle, to the side, to the corner? 
Is that easy to do? Yeah. Yeah? Are you having fun? Yes. Do you know everybody's watching you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put... Um, you're just going to keep on eating? Yeah. Okay, let's put some apples in the middle. I'll use a spoon. So I just chopped some apples here. Um, and I've left the skin on, but that's up to you. You can core it and um, take the peel off if it doesn't uh, suit you. But um, we just love our peels. Have, it has lots of nutrition. We're just going to put that in the middle. All right. So we'll have those later, okay? And you got, why don't you help me first? Good idea? Is that a good idea, Arjun? Here, wipe your hands. Yeah. Okay. Because you're my help for That's a yucky fork. Okay, I'll pull it out. All right. So, are you ready to go? All right. So, on that, I'm we've just got chopped apples over there. We're just going to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon. So, that's about a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Good job. Okay. And we're going to put about mm, half a teaspoon of sugar. You can use brown sugar if you want. I'm just using regular sugar. Come on. All right. And what does it smell like? Apple sauce. Apple sauce. Okay. All right. Let's do your part now. You pull them all to the middle. Next one. You did not cut it. I didn't cut it properly. Okay, there we go. You fixed it for me. Okay. And what do we put in the middle of that? A strawberry. A strawberry would be nice right in there. Okay, so grandma's already cut one. You want to put it there? Yeah. So that's a little one. No, it's a big one this time, right? Yeah. Okay, so. There's your apple pie with the strawberry in the middle, and I hope you can see it. Apples over there. And then I am going to prepare one for uh, something that you can have for lunch. And uh, we're going to make sure that it's a vegetarian one because who doesn't eat meat in this house? Papa. Grandpa, that's right. So we have to we have to make one for <laughs> we have to make one for grandpa. Grandpa teasing you on the side. Yes. Okay, here you go. We have to make one for that grandpa can eat, right? Yes. You're gonna hold my hand or should I just do what did you find to eat? Just some chocolate. You found chocolate over there. How did you find chocolate? Am I doing a good job? Yes. Okay. All right, there we go. Oh you forgot you made the extra. Okay. Um, what are we making? We're making something for Grandpa. So what we have here is some chopped spinach that we're just going to put in the middle. Yeah, chopped spinach, right? So it's just loose. You can always do um, sauteed broccoli and a bit of onions and garlic and put that in the middle when it's cooled. Anything you want, whatever, whatever suits you. And to that, we're going to add a little bit of pepper. Okay, can you lean back, Arjun, just a little bit? Okay. Yes, thank you. So a little can bit. I help? Yes, you can. Hold my hand. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit of pepper in there and, and just a little bit of salt. But this shaker is kind of wild, so I'm just going to put it in there. Okay? And then to just um, make it a little bit more exciting, we are going to put some goat cheese in there. Goat cheese? Yeah. And something to always remember um, before you start cooking with your children is, or with, with other people's children is watch for allergies, okay? So Arjun has some allergies, so we try to avoid it when we're in the kitchen, right? Yeah. And we're very, very, very careful. So there's a little bit of goat cheese on the top of that. And can you close that up for me? Yeah. Can you fold the corners up? Yeah. Good job. Okay, the other one. I'll hold it down for you, okay? You can tell everybody how easy it is to do, right? And is it pretty? Is this pretty? Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Okay, what do we put in the middle there? How are we going to decorate that one? Yeah. A piece of carrot. Okay. For the bunny rabbit. That's your grandpa. Yeah. Right? That's carrot. 
as a carrot. All right. So last but not least, we're going to do one with grandma's favorite ingredients. Don't forget the dip here. Yes, we're going to do this one now. This is what grandma loves. Don't forget the, uh, the this one for this side. Okay. We're only going to make five today. Okay. So this is the last one. All right, I'm going to cut it. And then you get ready to do your, your work. What's your work? I'm counting it. Wanted to do six today. You wanted to do six today. Okay, next time we'll do more. Okay, put your head back because I got a knife in my hand. Today I wanted to do six. Oh dear. Okay, we'll have to do that another time. Let's see what I have here. Okay. Have a teaspoon. Okay. So we're going to put some pears in there. And grandma's favorite is pears and brie is my favorite cheese. So we're going to do one with pears and brie cheese, right? Is that what we're going to do? Yes. yes. Okay, so we're going to put that out. Why can I say my You're going to help me put the cheese on? Yes. Okay. Goat. Not goat cheese. This is cow cheese, but it's called brie. So grandma's already sliced some here and kept goat. it for you. <laughs> All right, do you want to put that on for me? Okay, a little sticky, so just watch your fingers. Okay. Yeah. You're okay no, touching it? Allergic to it? No, this is cheese. You're not allergic to cheese, but I'll put it there for you. Okay. All right, do you want to do the corner? And you could you could um, just drizzle a little bit of uh, honey over there, but we're not using honey today because we're going to try to stay sticky free and not make a mess. And not do that one properly. Okay. There you go. And this one here. Oh, did we make that too big? Okay, there we go. No, we can do it. Here. I wanted to do Okay, you do that one. What are we going to put in the middle of that? Maybe another blueberry? Or do you want to put a smiley? Um, uh, I wanted to put a... Okay, let's make a decision. What do you want? I'm going to put a blueberry, okay? Right here. All right, so we're going to put that all you on this. remember, let's put jam in. Oh, that's right. We put jam the last time. Okay, you want to put jam? Jam, yeah. All right. And there's a lot of peanut butter on that. So we're going to put a blob of jam in the middle to make it a little sweet. You want to hold my hand? Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that's because Arjun asked me to. We put some jam in the middle. Yeah, there is some jam. Okay, now the next part I'm going to do because Arjun is allergic to eggs. So you are going to wash or paint. And I've got a, a brush here. You can get that from the dollar store. Um, and you just lightly beat an egg. And you're going to brush it back over the pastries. Okay, and the reason you do that is it gives it a nice brown color when you put it into the oven. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, are you waiting to eat them, Arjun? Yeah. You are. Which one are you going to eat? I need to eat the m and The m and one. one. Okay. All right. So, that is going to go into the oven. It's already preheated at 400. It's going to take about 15 minutes. And you're going to take it up. Yes. Can I eat the jello at your house? Yes, you can. Yes. So when we put this in the oven, what does it have to look like when we take it out? It needs to be uh, brown and puffy. Brown and puffy. Lovely. Lovely. Brown and puffy. It has to be brown and puffy when you take it out. Okay, so that's going to go into the oven. And I'm going to show you, we have some prepared ones here already, that what it's going to look like when it comes out. Okay, so I hope you can see it. This one is the pineapple. This one is the spinach. Ooh, what's happening there? This one is the brie. Arjun, your head's going to fall <laughs> off. Everybody's watching you. Okay, and this one is the peanut butter and jam. And we've got the apple, apple pie one in here. Ready? Are you done? Okay, so why don't you tell everybody? Thank you, everybody, for Thank watching you. us and for spending some time with us. Bye, everyone. Enjoy. Hope you make some danishes. Thank you, Arjun. You were fantastic. Can you come and cook at my house? Uh, thank you, Lizette.
Can you come Is and that cook? Thing? That auntie's asking, can you come and cook in her house? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. And then my house too. Because <laughs> I can. Thank I you so much. Rizette is a talented lady. Lucky Kevin, lucky Arjun, and lucky kids. Thank you, oh, thank you. very much. And she has a blog. I think I've sent it out before, but she has a blog that tells you all the stuff that she does. She does painting. She does everything that you can think of. Thank you, Lizette. Oh, and, thank you for having us. And uh, we move on to Bertha. Bye, Arjun. Bye, see you, bye. Give us a kiss. Hello, Bertha. Hello, Emily. Hi, everybody. And hello to everyone watching. Okay. Um, I'm going to introduce Emily, my granddaughter. She's my little assistant for the day. She worked out how much I've got to pay her. So we've come to some compromise and uh, we are going to get started. So <clears throat> what's happening? I know y'all are all feeling nice and safe and warm in your homes, but I'll tell you what y'all are missing. And y'all are missing the smell of freshly baked bread. That's what this kitchen smells like right now. So I've got an Easter theme. I'm going to be making two, two breads. Um, one is with, uh, I've made, the pastry is all homemade. So one is a bread pastry and the other one, they're both bread pastry, but one is brioche and one is the plain bread uh, that I'm making. So one is the Easter egg bread and the other one, which I call the Easter cactus flour bread. Okay, so because of the lack of time, because the pastry has to rise and things like that, most of it was pre-made. And most of the baking was done today. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the Easter egg bread. And Emily is going to help me to roll. She's a little baker. You can see it has junior chef Emily. She does, she really does on her own. She's eight years old, but she does nine, nine years old. <laughs> and she does a lot of baking on her own. The only thing she's not allowed is to put the oven on. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Emily, uh, so um, we're just going to focus the camera because, and thank you to my daughter-in-law who's allowed me to use her kitchen because my Wi-Fi and stuff is not working in my home. Okay, so Emily, you take this. Can you see? Okay. So watch what I'm doing. Okay, and take this flour. Okay, so we're just going to roll here so watch what i'm doing okay let's go and watch what i'm doing so just spread it out that's good and make it as long as possible so this is the easter egg bread that i'm making so i've made it in this bowl to start with it was a little ball and it came right to the top so i had to punch it down but i would have loved to have shown you when the pastry is all done all the porous effect that shows you the success of the pastry. But unfortunately, that couldn't be done today. So try to go to the end of your thing. Okay, that's the two. And I'll do the third one. Okay. And you roll it. Okay. So we're just doing it hurriedly, but um, if we had more time, we'd do it a little neater. But this is just to give you an idea of, I'm going to be doing the braid in a minute. So Emily is the one who's going to be doing the braid. So Emily, you want to start? Sure. Okay. So I'll tuck that in for you. We tuck the edge and you do the braid. Make it nice and tight. There, yeah.
wonderful. We come to the end. And I'm doing my Okay, we've done this. You just tuck that in. Okay. Tuck that in. And then you put. So we're not going to. So at the at this point, when this is done, <coughs> we just leave this for about say 30 minutes. And when it rises, that's when we will put the beaten egg and and um, some sesame seeds or whatever seeds of your choice. And then what we do is we put the eggs in. I do it with the eggs. We tuck them in like that and we bake it like this. However, when I show you the finished product, I'll explain to you why I do not bake this bread with the eggs, but this is the way it's usually done, okay? And I will move on to the next bread, which is my Easter cactus bread, okay? So, <clears throat> now, when you look at the finished product of this bread, okay, can you see? Okay. When you look at the finished product of this bread, you may think it's difficult to do, but it's not. So just watch what I'm doing, and it's actually very easy, okay? So the first thing I did was to make four rounds, okay? I had four rounds. I rolled them into, you know, like say for chapatis, okay? And you can put a filling of any choice. So you roll the first chapati, place it in your baking tray. And in this case, for this one, I use Nutella. Okay? Then I take the second chapati or round, cover that, put Nutella. Then I take the third round, follow the same procedure. And then the final round. Okay? Then this is what you get. You leave it to rest and it rises again. It's actually very flat, but then it rises again. Then this I just put as a mark for myself. Then we have 12 o'clock, 6, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. Okay? So what I do, first I just go around and I slice it. Then you slice this then you go to the next one which is that then you go to the next one okay then you go you got four now you make eight you have them again then again please give me a shout if you can't see well okay again and then that you now have eight and they're moving on to the next cut, which is that, that, <clears throat> that, When we have that, so now we, I did. Did that? Mm -hmm. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oh, I've got little Emily showing me what I haven't done. Thank you, Emily. Okay. So now what you do, you take the first bit like that. It's already going. Gooey. And you turn it. You give it two twists. You just twist it. It'll be a little messy. You twist it. Then you take the second one. And you twist it in the opposite direction. Okay. I'm sorry. It's a little messy because it's been rising for a while. And the chocolate has melted. But usually it's not that messy if you do it on time. Then you take the third one. You go in the opposite direction. Then you take the next one. And so on and so forth till you finish the fold. So each one, you just go in the opposite direction. 
turn it so then you see it when you bake you will see the line you don't see it now at this point you don't see it okay so it's a bit messy i'm going to leave it but emmy you want to continue doing that sure you continue doing that okay so just give me a moment i'll just clean my hands first night yes Turn that in that direction. Yeah. So. Okay. So let's put this on. Okay. So I've, I've done those two breads, and I just want to eat because I had everything pre-made. It didn't take too long. This bread usually I let it rise just for fifteen or twenty minutes, but the chocolate seems to have melted a little. So unfortunately, it's uh, looks a little messy. But it, if you take it out on time and you turn it, it just looks very nice. And it can actually look like the finished product, okay? But in a minute, I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah, then you go in the opposite direction. Okay, turn that one. So, now, <clears throat> usually when I put these eggs in the bread, um, like I said, that's how they usually do it. I don't do it. What I do is I boil the egg separately, and when the egg is ready, I place it in the bread. The reason for that is I have found that when I bake the eggs with the bread, it becomes very dry, very crumbly. So I don't like to eat it. It, it doesn't taste as nice. The way I do it, it's soft and fluffy, and you enjoy the egg. And I like to color them, especially when the children come over. It looks beautiful when it's all colored. Okay, so that's how I do my eggs. Okay, and um, the colors that I use when I want a pink, I save it, I save, put it in beetroot water. If you soak it for a few hours, it gets a beautiful color, like a pinkish color. For the green, I use the chlorophyll from the um, spinach and green leaves. For the yellow, I use turmeric powder. And then I have a blue egg as well that I use color, uh, okay, cake color. If you don't want to use the vegetables, by all means, you can use, uh, you know, food coloring, okay? So now I'm just going to show you. Now, when you're doing these breads, you'll get a lot of trimmings. You can either save that in your freezer because I find that this, hang on, my mouth's a bit dry. <laughs> With a lot of the trimmings, you can save them in your freezer or just make little buns for the kids to take a sandwich to school or for yourselves to eat at home. But this, these, the dough that I've made, it's a really nice dough, freezes well, and you can use them at any time for, uh, you know, sweet, something sweet or savory. They're lovely pastries and can be used at any time. So um, the, my, the cactus flour, I did two of them. I did one with chocolate, and the other one I did with spinach, um, uh, red pepper, and cheese. Okay? Yeah, wash your hands. Okay? So I'm just going to show you what the finished product looks like, okay? So just the thing. Just put it down here. So this is what my braid looks like, okay? Yeah. Can you all see it clearly? So I know if these are the colored eggs. That's with turmeric and with what I had just explained to you. This is my braided bread. You decorate it any way you want. And when you cut, you get these beautiful colors. You see all these colors. Now, I also want to say that when I make this bread sometimes, I slit it in the middle. I make like a cut about two inches deep. And you can make meatballs with gravy. So put your gravy first, cover it all with meatballs and more gravy. And when you, you know, everyone takes a chunk, they get a bite of everything. You get the meatballs. If you do this way, I'm going to slice these eggs and spread it across. So you get a mouthful of everything. Okay, so that's the braided bread, and put 
this one. Can, can you push this back okay? Yeah. And this is my cat, Easter cactus. I hope you can get a good look at this. This is my Easter cactus. Now, this is the one that has chocolate in it. And this one is the one that has, this one has got spinach, uh, red pepper, and cheese. Okay? If you want to make it more colorful for Easter, you can just put um, some chocolates at the top. Or you can serve it, serve it with fruit. Okay? Peach slices or anything. So that's what we got. And... With the trimmings of the bread, I made these little buns. You can put the ham in it. You can eat it however way you want. And these little croissants, as you can see, okay? You can enjoy it with that. So, and... So, folks, that's about it. And I have had, I had to drink this whole bottle to get some Dutch courage. And of course, I'm finishing it off now. So I'm going to cut a slice of this uh, braided bread. Enjoy it with the vegetables and the egg. Mm -hmm. And the knife, okay. And I hope you all all enjoyed what we made. And I'm coming to visit you all at Easter time so that I can taste the bread that you all are going to make for Easter, okay? okay. Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much. Ellie, Ellie and Bertha, thank you. We are not, you don't have to come to my house. I'm taking the, my, getting my car out of the garage and driving over. <laughs> thank Very you. Very awkward. You're welcome. I have four homes to visit. <laughs> cake. Yes, I did. I'll probably it's be it's drunk it's by the it's time it's I'm done. <laughs> but that's me. Thank you. Make that, was, that was amazing. Each one of you did a fabulous <laughs> job. Thank you, uh, Lizette, Joan, Bertha, <laughs> Fiona. Fiona, I can see that you already been into the booze like Bertha. I'm going to go lose some weight. Thank you. We will get the recipes to you. We're going to lose some weight, guys. Um, in the washroom. We will have the, we'll have the YouTube on the as well. Thank you very much for keeping us entertained.